Andrew Myers hails from Gary, Indiana. Andrew would eventually come to be known as the far out spacey G.I. Joe team member with a code name Footloose. Let's talk about him. But before we do, let me say thank you for watching JLS Comics. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe because I do upload videos just like this every single week. Let's jump into the story. Growing up in Indiana, Andrew was a model student. He was a class valedictorian and captain of the track team. He loved and was very good at basketball and even became an Eagle Scout. UK Action Force Footloose, though, is named Andrew McKay, and he's from Scotland, and is still both a scholar and an athlete studying Celtic mythology, not the Celtics like his basketball-loving American counterpart, and also participated in the Highland Games. After high school, U.S. Footloose pursued a degree in physical education, which he was able to do after winning a state scholarship. Slaughter's Marauder's foul car then says he dropped out suddenly, moved to California, and became quote-unquote quite weird, searching for elusive answers to cosmic questions for about three years. One day, while on the boardwalk in Venice, and this was changed to Venice Beach, California for his 2012 FSS figure, while walking on the beach, Andrew came to think that this was pointless, that his entire footloose existence was meaningless and random. So Andrew enlisted in the United States Army, eventually graduating from advanced infantry training at Fort Benning and then both jump school and desert warfare school. UK Footloose joined the parachute regiment of the British Army and then the SAS where he joined in the Falklands War. Scottish Footloose was different enough than Indiana Footloose that by Action Force issue 31 and 32, which are reprints of ARAH issue 37, he got a new code name to become an entirely new character. There, Footloose became Long Slide. Back stateside around this time, he most likely deployed to Granada. Afterwards, he quickly found himself recruited into the G.I. Joe team and earned the codename Footloose. According to Mark Belomo's Ultimate Guide to G.I. Joe, Larry Hama suggested that Footloose could be a refresh for Grunt. Other proposed names for Footloose were Bravo, as in 11 Bravo, Army MOS for Infantry, and he was almost called Action. Debuting in 1985, Footloose made his appearance in what was new military equipment at the time. Footloose has a distinctive helmet using a combat helmet from the Personnel Armor Systems for Ground Troops, the Pazget helmet, that he stuffs with leaves for added camouflage. Footloose then debuted in 1985's A Real American Hero comic book series by Marvel Comics and Larry Hama with issue 37 and right on the cover with the Crimson Twins and Flint. While some of the team were at the circus battling the Crimson Twins, Footloose was reporting to Fort Wadsworth with his PCS orders, security clearance verification memorandum, and other documents for in-processing. When he entered the chaplain's motor pool area, he ran into Wild Bill working on his dragonfly. Wild Bill commented on his new uniform, saying he's got the replacement BDU look down, and this was before BDUs were retired in favor of ACUs. Wild Bill called him the new Bullet Stopper, to which Footloose stammered like, Scooby-Doo, Bullet Stopper? It's what the B in 11 Bravo means, he says. The first thing he did was drop his gear and jump in the gunner seat of Wild Bill's helicopter. As the chopper raised up through a roof hatch, Footloose was sweating bullets. So they did a flyover of the Arbco Circus where Gung Ho, Ripcord, and Blowtorch were with Candy, aka Bongo the Bear, aka Ripcord's future girlfriend. Wild Bill picked up the Armadillo mini tank with his helicopter from a nearby live fire training area and Footloose was the one to run and gun in it, fighting with Zamot who was on his quad. He got the hang of it real quick. He was like Dominic Toretto whipping the tank around the circus grounds. He's a one-man army that lives his life a quarter mile at a time. He then went with a small fire team to raid a Cobra safe house on Staten Island. Clues from their encounter at the circus led them to this house where Zaymont and Tomax were hiding out and Candy said that she also lived. But there, he didn't breach with the rest of the team. I guess he was keeping the engines warm, a wheelman again. For the invasion of Springfield, the Ripcord rescue mission, Footloose was on Hawk's strike team, tasked with taking and securing the airfield and then neutralizing the main HQ building. So then Footloose wasn't seen for quite some time, but he did show up on base security duty at the Presidio in San Francisco. Zartan walked on base disguised as General Hollingsworth, so Footloose, Dusty, Roadblock, and Bazooka responded. Breaker walked out one door at the Presidio, and both Bazooka and Footloose shoved their sidearms right in his face. And that's mostly what he's been doing in the following years, although he did participate in some Black Ops special missions. One mission sent him to Southeast Asia in a black stealth C-47 Dakota piloted by Wild Bill and Lift Ticket. They were there on orders from a CIA spook, a snatch and grab or capture kill mission to recover a double agent who stole some chips from an Eland site in Thailand. He dropped in country with wetsuit, flint, beachhead, tunnel rat, and lowlight. Footloose found a weird component in one of the radios that the CIA agent had given them, and one of their first clues that the mission was not right. They set up an ambush along a dirt road, laying in wait for hours for the convoy to rumble by. Once again, Footloose is shown to be sweating buckets. 
He says he's hearing things like bells and whistles. So I guess he's hallucinating now too. Or he actually looks a little bit like uh, Kevin Bacon here, star of the movie Footloose. So that messed up radio gave away their position. So they had to escape quickly to the extraction site and they made it back to the Tomahawk and Footloose was the first one on board. Then he went back on base duty for a long time. He finally showed up again in a snake hunt event from 2020. He was on one of the buses to the town of Springfield to rescue Sean Collins. But then for the entire mission, he was one of the G.I. Joe team trapped on one of the buses in the parking lot outside the Springfield Recreational Center. Even as late as the silent issue 275, which is where we leave him in the winter of 2020. Still a minor silent part of the team. He may be, but still a very much a vital, important part of the G.I. Joe team and their ongoing missions against Cobra and the forces of evil. Footloose was also in G.I. Joe European missions, starting with the first issue, which were reprints of British Action Force issues. He was with Leatherneck, Roadblock, Flint, and LJ trying to save an ambassador who was being held hostage by CGs, who also wanted to plant a tracking device. Then back at Action Force headquarters, their MOD liaison, Ray Trent, held Footloose back after a meeting to confirm that Footloose was going on holiday, vacation. But then he says that a double bluff can be deadly. So Footloose left and got on a train and was quickly surrounded by Cobra battle android troopers, bats, and he, the bait, was captured. The Crimson Twins and their bats used Footloose to get on base, but this is exactly what Action Force wanted, and they were defeated. In the next issue, Trent's daughter was kidnapped by the Dreadnoughts, and one of the demands for her to return was to get Action Force the F out of the way, so he sent them all, Footloose included, to a deserted Greek island. For European Mission 6, Footloose was on the cover with a wacky look on his face as the team fought their way out of a tomahawk. They had to drop onto an atoll a few hundred miles off of Indonesia where a US B-2 bomber had crashed. He was then both lookout and comms for a mission to intercept a Cobra ship receiving a consignment of weapons from Destro's Mars Industries. So at the dock, where the deal was going down, he found a good overwatch position. He said, hey, relax with me watching, it's like having your own personal guardian angel. But a cobra eel snuck up behind him and tried to kill him. But Footloose flipped the eel over and held him at gunpoint. And as soon as he had that distraction, the mission on the vessel went to hell. So he boarded the ship with just enough time to then jump right off into the water. For the Sunbow animated series, Footloose was voiced by Will Ryan, the same actor who was the voice of rock and roll. The first time we see him is in The Further Adventures of G.I. Joe, part one of the Pyramid of Darkness. And here, Footloose is using a jump jetpack to defend the space shuttle, flying right out to meet the Crimson Twins and Cobra who are flying around like hornets in trouble bubbles. He then showed up in part three as one of the Joes surrounded by terracotta warriors in the City of the Dead. After his best Keanu Reeves talking about surfing impression, he shot one of the Guardians in the face with his laser rifle. His breakout, though, came in The Viper is Coming, now having more of a speaking part. He was one of the Joes at Barbecue's barbecue party, up on the balcony playing with repelling gear with Alpine. He was one of the team that went to the Arctic to capture Cobra at their secret Arctic R&R base. Cold weather Footloose, that was what was happening in the ice, I guess. Following another clue, Footloose was then in the Battle of West Point, driving an awe striker against a column of Cobra-operated tanks. They won with speed and maneuverability, blowing up treads and getting Cobra to ruin each other. Playing around with Alpine's ropes helped out because later he and Alpine ascended the exterior of the extensive Enterprise's skyscraper. But after a fang attack, their climbing rope snapped and Footloose was almost street pizza just before Alpine grabbed his hand. It was like something out of a TV show. Oh wait, it was. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it turns out that the Viper was a window Viper there to clean the glass. His next big appearance was with the episode Excalibur. He was ordering Spirit and Quick Kick around as they protected an anti-Cobra radar system they were to install in the British Isles. They were trying to drive back Storm Shadow, who now had the legendary Sword of Excalibur from Arthurian lore in his possession. Stormy tried to get away on a motorcycle, but Footloose grabbed the back of it, dragging him along, again his feet loose from the ground. He didn't hesitate to attack the ninja, but Storm Shadow was able to capture him, and he brought Footloose, still unconscious, to Cobra Commander and Destro. But Footloose quickly woke up and started fighting them to escape. Storm Shadow cut down an entire stone column with Excalibur, which fell right on top of Footloose, and he was out again. But later, Spirit and Quick Kick broke him out of the Cobra Brig. Then, in Worlds Without End, Footloose was one of the Joes, along with Grunt, Flint, Lady J, Airtight, Stealer, and Clutch, who were transported to an alternate reality by a matter transmuter weapon. They found a cave, and inside, Footloose found an old Ostriker, and yes, the keys for it. The Ostriker broke down and somehow they had enough cash on hand to purchase eight motorcycles from a general store which inexplicably had that many for sale in the middle of nowhere. And later he gets to fly a Skyhawk as well. 
Another big episode for Footloose was Hearts and Cannons. He showed up in the cargo bay of a transport plane, strapping down a tank in the middle of a violent, turbulent storm. And he was with Dusty. As the plane started to go down, they needed to dump weight, so he grabbed Dusty's arm and jumped right out of the plane to the shock of CoverGirl. I think she likes me, Dusty said to Footloose, who replied, I think you're deeply deluded, man. They slept in the desert, stranded, and when Footloose awoke, he was face to face with a scorpion. Freaking me out, man, he said. Then they stumbled across a Cobra weapons testing facility out in the dunes who happened to be testing a new plasma cannon built by Dr. Winters against her will. So together they broke onto the base, stole a stinger, and rescued Dr. Winters. She said, that's Dr. Winters to you, and Footloose said, right, and I'm Dr. Footloose, and that's Dusty up there, he's just an intern. So they got outside the perimeter fence, and Footloose threw the doctor right out the side of the stinger because it was damaged and about to blow up. But then Winters stepped on a mine in the death zone. And with a stinger battalion bearing down on them, she said, what do we do? And this is what Footloose did. He sat down in the sand, crisscross applesauce, and said, I'll tell you in a minute, I'm meditating. He then stood up and said, I'm seeing something cosmic here. You see, everything is everything. So his thought was, the weight on the mind is just weight. He switched out the weight of her foot for a rock and saved her. So he managed to get her off the mine. But then in the middle of a sandstorm, a guy named Jabal captured Footloose, Dusty, and the doctor. And Footloose was like, what's your trip, man? Jabal, though, quickly freed them when he saw the G.I. Joe patch on Footloose's arm. So then they got out, and they were in a tank battle in the desert with Destro. Footloose's tank got hit, and he was smoking and on fire and about to be blown up and killed. But Dusty jammed the wheels on Destro's tank so that Footloose could shoot the unarmored back of Destro's tank, winning the day. And it turns out that Jabal was a king, and he gave them both medals for liberating his people from Cobra's slithery grasp. The last time he really said anything was in Cold Slither, where he was getting loose to Cold Slither at the pit. After some sweet footwork, the song hypnotized him, Breaker, and Shipwreck. And Footloose also had his own PSA, which was about, of all things, nosebleeds. Footloose was also in the G.I. Joe movie, but he's one of the Joes that didn't say anything, and he showed up in the Deke series that followed Sunbow, although again, he didn't say anything. We do see him in a Lynx, though, and in a Raider, and at one point, hanging out with Sergeant Slaughter, because yes, he was with Slaughter's Marauders. Which brings us to action figures. Footloose's V1 action figure was released in 1985. He came with his trademark helmet along with an M16A1 rifle and an M73A1 Laws rocket launcher and a backpack. His MOS is, as you'd expect, infantry, but his secondary MOS has him as basketball coach. Yep, when he's not shooting Cobra, he's shooting hoops. Footloose landed the number one spot for the 1985 G.I. Joe catalog, too. In 1989, Footloose got a stripey repaint and joined Slaughter's Marauders, his accessories now all black. A third Footloose in 2005 was a direct-to-consumer release. And in 2009, version 4 Footloose became a Toys R Us exclusive, and he was part of a five-pack set along with Repeater, Dial Tone, Law & Order, and Zartan. His look here is markedly different. This was for the Rise of Cobra line, and he now came with a helmet with a visor on it along with a desert camo pattern on his uniform. The 2012 FSS Footloose brought him back to his roots with his jungle camo, leafy helmet, rifle, and rocket launcher once again. Speaking of rocket launchers, it's time for me to launch right out of here. That's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.